and the analyst desk to talk about home G's second win in a row. Thank you very much, guys. OMG have shown up in this series. Loveling playing Rengar took the head off of Watch playing Kha'Zix. He finished the quest. He has shown to be the better jungler in this series. And the rest of OMG has shown up. With the exception of side lane management, OMG is beating Shield player for player strategically as well. I was so wrong so far in picking Shield. I mean, OMG turned up. If you look at going, that guy's a rock. His pacing and his spacing is so good. He will always flank, lead his team, and somehow find a way to get onto Zephyr. And then Loveling as well. He kicked more people game one in like one game than I think I've seen Lee Sin Zhu in an entire LCS weekend. <laughs> They're playing so, so well. And you know, the thing about Zave is everyone kind of says Najin Shield, you know, Zave's probably their best player. He carries every game from top lane. I'm going to go on a little aside here and talk about top lane disease, which uh, is a CLG term. It's when the top laners always want to play whatever they want to play, just to counter pick lane, and they just don't perform with that it's like sweet niche pick in competitive play. It happens with like every top laner for a lot of teams, and especially with Najin White Shield. First game, casting in against Aurelia, got dumpstered. This game, Nidalee versus Ryze. God, Dumpster. Gogoing's been outperforming him two games in a row. I really expect the top lane to be a lot closer than this, but the top lane disease, it strikes again. Yeah, let's also call, you know, we have to call out the elephant in the room. OMG took a long time to finish that matchup. Loveling, unable to find the picks that later, but they had absolute control, and it felt like it was a matter of time. Yeah, and I want to talk about the picks and bans just a little bit, because we identified this as a really a weak point for Najin and Shield, and it's definitely coming into play right here. I mean... It's, it's baffling why they keep prioritizing this Zed pick. It doesn't really seem to have high priority, so why go ahead and take it first? Especially when Janna is one of Gorilla's best champions. Gorilla is the guy who brought Janna into this world's meta. It was Shield's performance in regionals that really sparked all of this Janna play around the world. And if you're going to take that Zed, you better eliminate Disengage from the other team. You can pull it further down the draft. Also, this Nidalee pick, I really am not a big fan of it. We saw Acorn play it on Samsung Blue, the AP Nidalee, that is. And we've seen Safe play it now. It just never seems to have that big impact. Yeah, OMG is definitely drafting well because somehow they've been forcing Gorilla on two champions that he's just not known for. He's not a Brown player and he's not a Morgana player. He's an insane Thresh. He's an insane Janna and he's an insane Nami. Yet he somehow he ended up on neither of them so far. Well, Crepo, let's pull up the first replay. We do have two of them lined up for you. The first one is something that D-Man mentioned very early on. Najin White Shield are being pulled or suckered into these super early team fights two games in a row that OMG are just coming out with the victor. So talk me through this eight-minute dragon fight. Crepo. So yeah, before we roll the clip, just look at the position. Yes, yeah, sound's not there, but look where Gagoin is. He's always in position to flank the AD carry. And I don't understand why you would do this dragon if you have the risk of getting collapsed on unless you have five people in the area immediately and you can just jump on that one target that comes close. If we roll the clip, we see exactly why Cloud is good. He just leads this team, good tornado, messes with them. Gorilla just gets bursted. The exhaust comes out. First exhaust already right there on Watch. Watch can't do anything. Go go and comes into the fight. Second exhaust goes around save. They jump away from from Goong and all he can kill is the support. Kung doesn't uh, cool doesn't die because his spacing is good as well and just. Clean, crisp play from OMG. Yeah, not only that, but it's you have to remember what the win conditions of your comp are. When you have this Corky and this AP Nidalee, you need to poke so that yeah. you get somebody low enough so that Zed can go in and complete that assassination. Without Nidalee there, they didn't have the tools to get that or even fight that drag at all. Let's pull a second replay up. It has come a little later in the game, around 23 minutes. This was sort of the icing on the cake for OMG. Uh, securing control, much better. Right, and it starts out actually very good for Notch and White Shield, but then they make a critical error. So let's go ahead and roll this right here. So when we see this kind of all-in attempt, yeah, it definitely is sloppy. Watch gets out. Now, Goong's going to ult cool. So he why this is good, he gets exhausted, but the death mark's going to kill him. Now, that's great. You get the shutdown gold, and they needed to kill Jace so that they could finally siege this middle turret. There was an extended middle turret siege earlier. But what Safe does is he walks up on the side and gets bola and this is why Go Going is so good. You see his spacing on Rise is absolutely insane. Between every single spell cast that he does here, he's moving forward because he knows he has HP advantage on everyone, and he can essentially 1v3. He gets the W onto Zephyr, and Zephyr has no option. You, you ask yourself, why did he Valk sideways? It's because he was dead. Right, but had the positioning been better, they would have gotten that very important shutdown gold, and if they had moved up, onto the, up into the left side there, and uh, instead of save trying to create a zone, take the tower, move up, on the map, and then you get out of that situation very, very easily without giving anything up at all. Watch also decided to go in after they engaged with the Bola on to save. 
mistakes in positioning from Najin White Shield, and Rise capitalized on them beautifully. I want to highlight the Rise in particular because coming into it, we did talk about Rise as a champion that was going to feature. We put it in our MVP bundle for the quarterfinals. It's been banned 25 times at Worlds, and Go Goings managed to get his hands on it again. 12 1 26. I didn't think we'd see that Rise at all in this series. I mean, in the LPL, Rise is consistently banned against Go Going for this very reason. And if we talk about the team comp with Jason Rise, now we've seen the Samsung teams run this as well. There's a massive power spike at 23 minutes usually when you get the tiers both fully stacked. They should not have a lead with this composition before 23 minutes, but by that time, OMG was already crushing it. So double lift, I'm going to throw it to you for final thoughts before we move on. Um, the False Prophet predicted Shield to win this one. Uh, Crepo did, Monte Cristo did, the viewers did. Yourself and Freak are the only two that sort of felt believed in Cloud. Is this what you were expecting, or is OMG even overperforming? I didn't necessarily believe in Cloud as an individual performer, but I did think that um, that kind of change might spark some sort of because I saw the potential inside OMG. God, the overuse of the word potential. Because <laughs> really, the person who's underperforming in my mind in this whole series so far for OMG is cool. He's taking a lot of poke and a lot of damage. He's one of the reasons why they can't close out the game so quickly. Uh, but I did believe in Go Going, Loveling, and San, and they have definitely played well. Yeah, they really have. Talking about some of the players, earlier today we asked you on Twitter which player and what champion has impressed you the most during the 2014 League of Legends World Championship and why. And here's just a few of your answers. Uh, from at Cortizel, the champion that impressed me the most was Lupus Singed. He proved Singe is still viable with the right team comp. Yeah, I loved it. He went into a level 2 proxy that actually allowed that insane 3 buff to go through because he ran into the enemy blue buff, got that, then they forced, uh, I think, Amazing it was back into uh, his enemy blue buff, got caught there, Lupo TP down, and he just won the game with that play. And yeah, how do you play against Singe? Where do you practice it? Yeah, you can't. Next up, at GGC Star Jun DQ, Dade's Twisted Fate was such a pleasure to watch. TF highlights show how high Dade's game awareness is. So true. I mean, he's always been just a massive force in Korea on that Twisted Fate. I have seen him single-handedly win games by winning all three lanes uh, with three ults in a row. So it's always impressive to watch it. I love seeing his TF. Well, hopefully we can see more of it. Uh, next up comes from us at Reva Flair. He says, Insects Rengar has stood out the most. Effective ults and love the full damage builds. Warranted bans in every game versus EDG. Double lift. Yeah, Insects Rengar was banned every single game of the quarterfinals by EDG. And it's just ridiculous because you th you think Insect, you think he, he kind of created that whole Lee Sin play. But really, he's an incredible Rengar too. It's so feared that it's banned by his uh, peers. Well, we are about to uh, step away, but before we do, we want to keep hearing from you throughout the World Championship. So keep tweeting to us at LOL Esports. Be sure to use that hashtag Worlds. Uh, we are going to head back to base for just a few moments, and when we come back, can OMG make it three games in a row and set up a rematch of last year's quarterfinal versus Royal Club, or will Najin White Shield stop them? Find out when we come back.